Oh, okay. Here. All right. I think we are live on YouTube. And okay. we're sorry, everyone. This is Rose from Gallup Arts. And we are joined by three mm -hmm. artists tonight for a virtual artist talk, which we were planning to stream live right. on I think Facebook. We are live on um, YouTube. Okay. And okay. we're sorry, everyone. This now is you can Rose hear me. From <laughs> okay. We are having technical difficulties, if that is not obvious. So we're streaming live on YouTube. We'll post and share the video on our Facebook page. Uh, one of our artists, he was frozen, so he had to leave. Now he's coming back. So just bear with us as we navigate all of our technological issues tonight. But it's going to be a really great talk. Antoinette Thompson is here. Tasha N is here. Nate Nez is here. And all three are featured in the current show on view at Art123 Gallery, Art in Isolation, which is up for one more week. Um, the show is focused on art made in response to the coronavirus pandemic or during the pandemic. And um, it, it, it is, it's really, it's been really great to see how artists are creatively responding to this totally unprecedented time. And I know for me personally, they've helped me make sense of what's been going on. So first up, we'll have Antoinette, then we'll hear from Tasha, and then we'll chat with Nate. So we hope that you'll stick with us and enjoy. Um, so here, let me switch us. Okay, so Antoinette, you're unmuted, right? Okay, great. You have one piece in the show and uh, tell us the title and I will bring it up because I think the title kind of says it all, but then we'll dive more into the creative process and the meaning behind the work. I hate to say this, but I can't remember the title right now. You just put me on the spot. <laughs> oh, Angela, okay, it's staying centered through the chaos. <laughs> That's what it was. I knew it had something to do with being centered in the <laughs> chaos. Yeah, that, that is a big, big piece. Um, so tell us a little bit about the piece. Describe it because it's different seeing it on a screen than it would be in person. So tell us about the piece and then tell us about what prompted it or what, why you made it and what it what it means to you. Um. See, this, this piece took a whole entire day to make, but the thought and the process and getting the supplies, well, the, the, the whole concept of the painting took at least um, maybe two weeks mm. because with every art piece I make, I want it to be different from the previous art piece. As a matter of fact, I really want to just like blow people's minds with all the paintings and the and, and the art that I make. Every single one of them, I want them to be completely different from the previous one. I was in Chicago when the pandemic happened, but my family wanted me home because they didn't want me to be out there with all this chaos that's going on. And so that, having to leave art school, having to come home, pretty much reset myself and just rescheduling my entire life mm -hmm. because of the pandemic. This is what that painting is about. It's about taking a beautiful painting and just destroying it with life. But at the same time, you're trying to pull the, 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 the beautiness of every single day and trying to make that the highlight of the piece. So if you look at the piece, it's, it's, it's dark in a way, but as you look at it, you can see that it's, it has faith and it has hope. It has comfort and it has, it has some kind of sense in it. And that's what I wanted this piece to be about. And I always incorporate arrowheads and it has arrowheads for all four directions for the Navajo culture and they're color coordinated to the to the mountains and the directions of the sacred mountains and i took four big pieces of canvas and i added the wooden the wooden sculpture in the center which is it, it, it goes both ways because 
that you can you can reflect that as yourself in the middle of the chaos and you're trying to stay centered or you can be on the outside looking at the chaos and praying for some kind of strength and some kind of comfort because in the navajo culture we have our deities and we have our our gods that we pray to that we give our offerings to so that is an abstract concept of who we pray to and who who we give our offerings to so this this piece is is not only to blow your mind but it's also to to create some kind of destruction at the same time a comfort as mm -hmm. you're viewing it and looking through it and just trying to absorb what is going on because it's a huge huge chaos but we're in the center of it so it speaks as an artist and as the viewer and i wanted to go both ways with this yeah i think that um it's beautiful when you look at it you can not only see but you can feel the conflicting emotions you're describing about um this this experience that we're all having and what it's like to be torn from your routine and your um kind of plans and your expectations for the future and to be just tossed into the middle of this whirlwind and this just confusing and totally different and unexpected time um and your eye, like you said, is drawn to the figure. And we have a close up of that that I'm going to share. Um, and I think the figure is just so beautiful because the shapes that you used are all very like geometric and powerful. Um, but then there's a softness to it. And I think that also speaks to how you deal with something like this. You have to kind of stay strong and stay grounded, but also stay open and stay um, ready to like accept what, is, what comes your way. So uh, can you talk a little bit more about the figure itself and what you use to create it? And make sure you tell people what the mouth is made of because I think that's such a special detail. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can do that. So since I've moved home in May, and I moved home because of my parents, you know, they're, they're older and I, I, I want them to be around a little bit longer. So that's the whole main reason why I came home was for my parents. And since I've been home, I've been creating different pieces that I haven't shown yet. And these tiny pieces that you see that are put together for the figure are tiny pieces of other art pieces that are going to be showing up soon. So these are the leftovers of what the pandemic has created for all of us i wanted to not forget about the past but i wanted the past to be a part of us in the present and going on with the future so it's it's like a time capsule it's not just designed specifically for the figure the figure was created to be alive i, I don't know if that makes any sense but that's what these pieces are these pieces are different art pieces put together to create this piece because I feel like that's what the pandemic has done, not only to me, but to everybody. I mean, it, it destroyed, but it also created something that we've come to realize. For me, it made me want to be a better artist. It made me want to dig deeper and use different items to create and share what I really feel inside. So the the mouthpiece is um is is the the collection of paint at the end of a tube. Hold on, I think I might have one. Okay. So the paint here that collects on the tube, it, if I took it off to create some paint on the actual canvas, and it came off as a piece, and I just I just took it and I put put it on the mouth, and I just kept it there, and I thought it. I thought it makes a great piece. <laughs> yeah, no, I think it totally does. And I think it's so powerful and it speaks to kind of the uh, purpose of this show that artists can speak not only to their own experiences, but they can speak to something more collective and universal. And you as an artist are translating all of the different emotions 
that we're all having uh, into a visual form. And that's, that's like your gift. And that's what we all appreciate so much about what you and, and all artists do. And I thank you for uh, participating in this show and sharing the staying centered through the chaos message and peace with us. So thank you, Antoinette. Was there anything you wanted to say in closing? <laughs> Um, wear your mask, stay six feet apart, <laughs> and take care of yourself. And thank you, yeah, for checking out the show and listening to this Zoom. Thank you. Great. All right. So, um, we're just spending a little bit of time with each artist tonight because we have three and we want to be respectful of their time and yours. So, we'll move on to Tasha. Uh, and Tasha shared a really uh, personal body of work for the show. I actually, Tasha, I don't know if you know, but I didn't count how many paintings you have in the show, but um, it's a really neat display as a whole. You get a glimpse of kind of Tasha's personality, her daily life, uh, and it's all work that was created as kind of a means of coping and staying positive through uh, the period of quarantine. Um, so you have family portraits and pet portraits and landscapes and just images of things that you say make you happy and that reminded you about all the good things there are, uh, even despite uh, this kind of negative or negative leaning experience. Um, so I didn't know if there was one piece that you wanted to start with, uh, Tasha, or if you wanted, just let me know and I'll bring, I'll bring up that image. Uh. I didn't have any specific piece in mind to show, but well, a lot let's of show, let's show the globe mallows, the desert okay. globe mallows, because I think that that um, that's in the center of your display, and it uh, the colors in there speak to. You can talk more about your use of color um, in all of the pieces, how they're all tied together through the use of oranges and golds and yellows, uh, and these bright positive colors. And I also, I don't know anything about botany and I don't know anything about the desert globe mallows. <laughs> mallows, I don't even know if I'm saying it right, but I feel like um, it's it must be like a lot of the plants that we have in the Gallup area or in this desert Southwest where, uh, you know, there'll be nothing. There'll be like rock and just sand and dirt. And then this like beautiful flower that somehow is like making it through this really intense, uh, environment. And so I think it's kind of symbolic too of uh, your approach to making art in the coronavirus pandemic. But you talk about it. <laughs> you know? Sorry about that. That's okay. um, when I was going through the pieces I wanted to show for the art in isolation, I noticed that I was leaning towards a lot of yellows. And at the beginning of when I got the news that the gallery wasn't going to be open and um, so I had to stay home. A, a lot of us were staying home. This is something I started, but I didn't finish. So when Christian invited me to be a part of the show, it gave me that extra push to finish a lot of the half things that I did during quarantine. And this was one of them. And I think the, I don't know, I just really like um, flowers and things like that. Um, I'm also really interested in uh, like the local native plants here around in the area. So one of my favorite flowers obviously would be the globe mallows. I've painted them before, but this one I decided I wanted to try and make a, a really big painting. So this is kind of where that was. No, I also wanted to experiment with texture. So um, if you're able to see this piece in person, you'll notice that it's actually very textured and that's something I wanted to experiment with because I wanted the colors um, not necessarily to like blend in with each other but to I don't know I guess the texture gives it a little bit of an extra pop of its own which I thought was really interesting so that's kind of how this came about. <laughs> yeah and you um, here I'm going to bring up an image of the painting before it was finished that you shared with us. Um, Cause I think it's so neat to see an artist process and see how you started 
Um, and this is even more meaningful because as you said, um, you kind of fell into a funk like we all did, uh, having to drop everything and just stay home <laughs> um, and lost a little bit of motivation. Uh, but you were able to take what started as a beautiful idea and action and uh, follow it through so that we could all enjoy and share in that beauty. Um, mm -hmm. And I think uh, on the another thing that you touched on, which has been maybe a positive uh, or a silver lining of this experience for you is uh, you've started experimenting with different techniques and new techniques, and you always have an amazing, uh, juxt not juxtaposition, um, but uh, color composition in your works, and you always bring texture and layer to them, uh, and you do, again, a reminder to everybody, have to see these in person, so we hope you'll visit Art123 because it's not the same on the screen, um, but where was I going with this? Oh, I wanted to share the one of your pup that you did um, and if you'll describe it and tell us what technique this was and uh, how it's new to you and um, if you liked it, I guess, or not, and if you'll do more paintings in this style. Um, so interesting enough, uh, before the whole like pandemic happened, I was actually trying to work through my way of, um, there's this thing called a hundred what is it called? I already forgot. Uh, 100, 100 something where you pick something to do for 100 days. And so, you know me, I wanted to try to do 100 different types of art techniques in 100 days. So I was on my way doing that. And a lot of the pieces from that um, uh, followed through quarantine. And I did most of it, um, I wasn't able to keep. So I, this is one of them. And this was the prompt. I gave myself a hundred prompts and I would just like pick one of the day and work on that. And this one happened to be, um, oh my gosh, my mind is like, help me out, Rose. <laughs> what is the word? What did I call it? It was, um, it's called um, Oscar, right? No. Yeah, I mean, the subject, but the technique itself. I'm looking it up on my phone. <laughs> Wait, now you've made me forgot. It's um, Impasto. There you impasto. go. Impasto. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> I forgot that. But uh, it's Impasto acrylic, so it's actually very textured. And this is a photo that I had of um, our family dog. And we've had him for many, many, many years, and he's still around. But in my father's house, we have this huge, huge backyard that he would just kind of sit and watch and, you know, being able not to go anywhere when you're in quarantine. Those are the kinds of things that I like to reflect on. So this was him just like sitting there and watching whatever's happening. And I did the impasto technique. I used a palette knife and I made my acrylic paints really really, really extra thick by adding in some modeling paste. So the downside, which I found was hard with this was that if you wanted a really dark color, you had to add a lot of acrylic, especially because the, um, the modeling paste that I was using was opaque white. So it made it kind of really hard. But if you look up close, you can see some of the details there, which I thought was really cool. Cause when you look up close, you have no idea what you're looking at. <laughs> And when you're using the palette knife, it was kind of really hard because you had to be really um, uh, delicate and specific with um, your the, your tool. And I'm not. That was kind of hard for me. But um, when you look further away, the whole picture comes in and you can see it. So it's really cool. Yeah, no, I think uh, for your first impasto technique painting, <laughs> it turned out really well. Um, I think we have time to discuss one more. So tell us, I know they're all, these all are personal to you. Most of these paintings are not for sale, but which one's your favorite? I'll bring it up and you can explain why. Uh, <laughs> I don't think I have a favorite. Um, uh, Maybe one of your mom? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, uh, you can show that one. I don't mind. 
oh, there's my mom. <laughs> <laughs> so um, this was also part of the, oh, it's called the 100 Day Project. There you go. And this was part of that project. And I think, I don't remember what the theme for this one was, but um, I have a lot of old photographs. And my earlier work, like when I first, first began um, doing artwork, I used a lot of photographs. And I don't really do that anymore. And I really wanted to try to do that again. And the only thing that really inspired me, of course, was seeing my mom at seven years old. So that's her when she was seven. And I just used some um, old papers that I had and I painted around them. And when I think of my mom, I wasn't able to see her during this time. So it was that was extra hard because it's always been me and my mom my entire life. So that was really, really hard. And when I think of my mom, I think of someone who always brings some sort of, you know, light and hope. And so I um, doodled some flowers around her, which, and yellow, of course. So I don't know, I thought it was just like a little happy piece about my mom. And when I showed it to her, she thought it was really funny that I had found a picture of her at seven and she was laughing really loud. Um, but I'm glad that it brought, it brought her some, some smiles also. Yeah, that's really, that's a nice way to end. And it goes back to what Antoinette was saying earlier about what we will do for family. And then also, um, mm -hmm. I think we've all realized more and more the importance of family and those close to us uh, during these kind of times. Um, so be very beautiful. Thank you, Tasha. Thank you. All right, Nate. You want to unmute yourself? <laughs> so Nate has three pieces in the show that are part of a larger series of work. And um, I'm going to try to get the order right, Nate, but you can correct me because you made a piece each week, uh, kind of in response to the weekend curfews on yeah. the Navajo Nation. Um, and so the first one is the... Can you remind, is it 57 hour lockdown or is it a different one? No, the first one it was the one that was on the newspaper. Okay, it's this one, right? Or did I get it wrong? Which one? I don't see a picture. Oh, you don't? Um, it's the, uh, I think the one I think you called the 57 hour lockdown, the, the purple in the middle, the figure. Yes, yeah, that, that's okay. the first one. Okay, <laughs> so tell us uh, what got like what 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 you were thinking um, when the curfew started to be imposed, and uh, how this piece reflects that, and kind of more the meaning behind it, please. I think the way this one started was because at first everybody was all for it. They were like, "Yeah, we need a curfew. We need to protect ourselves. We need to to care for one another. We need just everything was." calm and peaceful at first everybody was like yeah we need to protect ourselves and so i was like yeah that's right that's what we all need to do is protect ourselves and so that's how this one started out and so that's why it's so calm and peaceful and this is a strong silent type well and then let's go to the second one because i noticed that when i looked at them in a series in order that what you're describing takes place visually. We move from being calm and kind of um, like steadfast and resolute in, in dealing with this crisis. And then here, I'll bring up the next one and you can explain kind of the emotional roller coaster <laughs> that we all experience. <laughs> so this is the second one, right? Do you see it? Uh, no, but I, I know what you're talking about. The second one is more about how after being on lockdown, I, like everybody was like, no, 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 I don't like this. I'm not, this is not, this is not right. This is, we shouldn't be like this. This, we should be free. We should be able to do what we want to do. It was started kind of getting to the point where people were like, I'm a prisoner of my own place. So that's why everything is starting to collapse and but you still have some people that were like no 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 we have to pray and that's why the lady in the middle is holding the basket with the the Navajo Nation some uh Navajo Nation outline on her on her wardrobe and so she's trying to hold the things together she's trying to keep peace and order but the, re the rest of it is going like 
No, no, this is not right. <laughs> and um, while we're on this one, will you tell people kind of some of the techniques you use? Because I know Mother Nature played a role in this piece, oh, yeah. is that right? So this one, it was raining that night. And so I painted a background and then I did the colors and everything else. And then I sat it on the rain and I let the rain just kind of wash it off. Like that's why there's the, the rainbow is fading away. And it just, I wanted to do something that was like natural without no brush strokes, without no splashing. You know, it's just let the mother nature take its course. And that's why the rain is coming down. Yeah, and I think that that's really cool because like you were saying, um, and like Antoinette was talking about and Tasha, there's these mixed emotions that came up, especially wow. at the beginning when we were all trying to wrap our heads around what was going on um, or what is going on. And uh, there's a lot, there was a lot of tension in that. And um, I think that even though you, how you describe people were kind of fighting it and didn't want to accept it, this is ultimately mother nature, right? And she's gonna yeah. do what she's gonna do. Yeah. And we don't really have a say in the matter. Um, nope. And so those, those feelings will bring up the third that we have, the third in the series that we have at the gallery. Uh, and I love this one because the chaos is just real at this point, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, it was, by the time the third one came around, everybody was just like, no, that's it. I'm, I'm leaving the reservation. I'm not part of this lockdown. You cannot hold me back. I'm going to this rally. I'm going. It's a, it was to the point where everybody was like, I don't have to stay home. I'm going where I want to go. If I want to go to Albuquerque, if I want to go to Phoenix, I'm going. You can't stop me. And that's why the, the chain link fence is there. Mm -hmm. So people were like, it was kind of like busting through the fence. Like, nope, you're not going to hold me back. This is, this is my life and I'm going to do what I want to do kind of thing. So are there, are there more in the series that follow this? And would you briefly describe those? Well, the one behind me is what I have also. So okay. let me see. This is after the whole COVID, like after he kind of like opened the reservation back up and everything is still kind of chaotic, but it's kind of coming back to the center where it's, Coming back to normal somewhat. And so, and then I also have another one that I wanted to send to you, but it had bingo divers everywhere because by that time, everybody, were, everybody was doing bingo. And so I was like, <laughs> it's only right to do bingo and, oh, and so and raffles and everything, but I, didn't, I wasn't able to get it to you guys in time. Well, that's neat. I mean, it's so, I think it's so cool how you've really captured each moment in time, how this pandemic has evolved, how we've evolved in response to it. Um, you've, you, you're, these pieces are really real. They're really raw, like including bingo uh, materials, including the rain, including all of this. Uh, the, it's like, and you, you're getting to like the essence. There's no facade with your work it's just this is what it was this is this is the truth of the matter and yeah. um i appreciate that right now because it's kind of cathartic to just see it reflected like that and then i think we're going to appreciate it even more farther down the line when we're looking back and remembering what it was like to go through this and um and you've created real mementos of yeah. of the time period that are really valuable. So what are you working on now? Are you continuing? Um, to I have a show downtown Albuquerque in the uh, first Friday in November. And so I'm kind of working on a, a title called Chaotic Healing, which is kind of like this, which is all the chaos we've gone through, but we're still healing. So that's the whole thing I'm working on right now. That's great. Um, so that reminds me that we should tell everybody and we'll have the other artists chime in as well where people can see you online especially <laughs> but if you yep. if you have shows happening how they can check out more of your work and and see more of what you're up to because we all know we need art now more than ever uh so nate yeah. tell us your instagram handle or your facebook or your website or whatever is best place for people to check you out 
So the best place to see my work would be on Instagram, which is under Navajo Khalifa, or you can just put Nate Nez and you'll, you can find me there on Instagram because that's where I post all my work. Great. That's good. Antoinette, how about you? Where can people find you online, especially? Um, my Facebook, my website, and my Instagram is pretty much the same. It's athompsonsart.com. And I should be in Santa Fe at the beginning of November to do a small art show with Fahrenheit. And then I'm working on a piece for Hotel Chaco. And I think that's all. Oh, I have five skateboards um, directed towards missing, murdered indigenous women. And I have oh. art everywhere. There's, um, there's skateboards actually at the Pivot exhibit in Durango, Colorado, Fort Lewis College. Then I have a skateboard hanging in Flagstaff. And then there's a bunch of pieces in Santa Fe area and in Albuquerque area. So my art's everywhere. <laughs> As it should be. But you can find me at A. Thompson's art. <laughs> okay, A. Thompson's art. And Tasha, what about you? Wait, unmute yourself. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You can find me on Instagram at Paco Taco Rocks. Yeah. <laughs> That's the only place you can find me. Simple. Paco Taco Rocks. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll bring everybody up and I will say thank you guys so much and thank you for bearing with the technical difficulties and thank you especially again for creating art during this time for sharing it with us and then tonight for talking talking through more of your creative process and your inspiration. Um, I think I speak for a lot of people when I say that the world uh, would be not as well off if we didn't have artists, if we didn't have you guys working and this time period would have, should I just say sucked even more if we, did, if we didn't have you guys to help us process it and make sense of it and walk us through it. So uh, thank you everybody for tuning in. Again, sorry, we couldn't stream on Facebook, but we'll get the video there ASAP. And uh, I hope everybody stays safe. So thanks to Antoinette Thompson, Tasha N and Nate Nez once more, and we will see you guys all later.